and that's how your Starbucks coffee gets made. This is where they buy from. Tim Horton, Starbucks, all these brands. Can you imagine doing this labor for $10 a day? ¿Dónde? ¿Aquí? Sí, aquí. Aquí están los guías. Sí. Vale. Gracias. Bye. Okay. So I'm going to try and do a tour of a coffee plantation today. This is the plantation right here. This lovely lady over there just showed me the way up. This is called the Carmen, Finca Carmen, here in Ataco. So this is the plantation here. All right. Gracias. So the tour is starting. This is the entrance to the farm itself here. We have an English guy today. I'm with his family here. So let's get stuck in. This is a beautiful property. So we have a barn up here. We have a parking lot. A place that they say they use for um, birthdays, weddings, this sort of stuff. It's super beautiful, this property here. Fancy flowers. Look at that. Beautiful house out there. Wow. This is exactly what I expected to kind of see. Wow, look at this. Imagine having your birthday or your wedding or something here. So we're gonna taste a bit of coffee, see the machines see the process that's what it's all about so he sent the coffee from these um, like trays here the white trays here behind me through that pipe they get washed here sent through that pipe there and then they get over to the building over here when the next process starts. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen different little crates, white uh, rooms where they put the coffee in. Um, and that is for different farmers around um, so they can keep track on it. And he says they sell coffee to Starbucks as well. But the problem with Starbucks says they export 90% and 10% stays here in El Salvador where they put their own brand on it. Buenos dias. So then it comes here into this machine and it gets washed here down here and yes he was saying the, the problem with Starbucks is they sell and they buy from all over the world and they mix it and they roast it themselves what they export here they don't roast they only roast what they sell in El Salvador which is the medium the medium roast but the problem with Starbucks is they buy from Brazil, they buy from here, they buy from Africa and they roast them all together which is why they don't get a pure good coffee lesson is moral of the story Starbucks is the McDonald's of coffee don't buy Starbucks kids all right so here he's saying up there where we were before to get the, the water in from these tanks up there or over here um, by water pressure that's how they move it and then they let it sit for a while in these tanks and what floats to the bottom is the good quality coffee that is yeah, the gourmet style coffee and the other part he uh, the other part is kept apart and is sold for instant coffee and less great less great quality of coffee and then it comes by water pressure through these tanks down here through these channels here flows here and then it comes to the ground here 
where we see the coffee beans here. Yeah. And he's saying the style of coffee that they have in El Salvador is the Arabica style. So they can only harvest this by hand, not uh, with machines like they can in Brazil or in other parts of the world where it's a bigger tree. So here we see he's got a little thing here that says natural grade 24th of February 2022 so the harvesting season was just done so here we see a coffee bean right here that's drying up and they get into this this is what it looks like on the inside afterwards I'm not sure if I should <laughs> let's try still very harsh can't really taste anything just like a nut but yeah then it comes over here and gets put out farmer by farmer into these piles for drying up and surely this one is more moist than the ones over there and again the natural and the name of the the farmer to keep it out then it comes from this and becomes the white over here that is now we have the different process for example with the wash process and this is the with the yellow color is the wash process in that we separate the red skin and the slimy part yeah. and at the end the coffee is stronger with balance of sweetness and we have the honey process you can see like the brown color that is like in the little mountain yeah mm -hmm. this is like the honey process in that we only separate the red skin not the slimy part and at the end the coffee is sweetness with caramelized flavor yeah and we have like the black one with the black one is like or the natural or an aerobic process yeah, with the natural we receive the, the, the beans and we put in the dry area. We don't separate anything. We dry with the whole skin. Yeah? At the beginning the coffee is full red, but after some day the coffee is going to take the black color. And at the so end we can get like a red fruity flavor or wine flavor. The and with the anaerobic fermentation... Wine flavors. Wine flavor, yes, or oh. fermented flavor for the skin. Sometimes uh -huh. when we smell the coffee we can feel like a raisin flavor, yes, or something like a tamarind flavor. And with the anaerobic it's the same. The coffee, but we recollect the coffee during the day, and at the end of the day, we put in plastic bags. When we put in plastic bags, we leave in ferment for seven days. And after seven days, we put in the dry area. Yes? And at the end, we can get more flavor, fermented flavor, like a sometimes tamarind or pineapple flavor. Yes? <laughs> this is how he moves it. Do you want to try to move? Yeah. Try it. To push it around. To get these lines, obviously to change it around so they get equally dried. This is the process. This is the process of, of drying it, he says. For the honey ones, the sweeter ones, the ones that we tried, the bourbon one, they keep the skin and this is why we have some that are white and some that are black. Here we have some of the bags. They put them in. Super cool old school bags here they used to carry it around it's all done by hand and water power imagine that that's some tough ass work and here we go have different I guess finished grains in here can you see there we go Beautiful here. And then we have the mountains in the background there. It is very beautiful. Alright, so the staff that they have employed to push the coffee around coming back out after lunch right now he says they get ten dollars a day for this around 
320 bucks a month that turns into. Imagine doing this from nine to five every day for ten for ten dollars. That is nothing. That's tough labor. That's the minimum wage here in El Salvador. Yeah, I can only imagine. I should not be doing that. Buenos dias. But yeah, as you can see, they have to push it around. Manual labor with these hats in the sun all the time. Just imagine that. These office hands wouldn't <laughs> would stand a chance in this in this job. Absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, you saying obviously they're drying it now for a couple of months. It's currently March. So drying it for a couple of months. They have this machine dryer over here as well. There's the smoke's coming up from the from the roof of this building here. And this is what they will use in the rare occasion that they get rain. That stops the, that makes them unable to, to push it around manually in the sun because you get a bit of taste from a naturally dried uh, beam. So here we go. This is the wood chopping station. You can see that here we have the, the boilers. When we use the dryers, we need to use the boilers. Yeah, then here we produce the fire, yeah? But to produce the fire, we are going to use wood of the same coffee tree or different wood, like a cypress. And we are going to use the second skin. With the second skin, we can get like a more pressure. Yes? We get more fire, more pressure, and we try to send all the smoke to the top, yes? But when the machine is working, uh, we open the little doors and the air is empty. Yes. So the part that is inside, we get a heat and we send for the fire. Yes. But at the beginning, they was working with a bigger boiler. Yes, you can see. There is a the end. But actually, it's not working because it has like a broken part or broken pieces, and they say that it's a sinus. So this is the inside of it. This is the boiler that they use. They use the same tree as the coffee tree. Here are the ashes left over, the bark. And yeah, wood chopping station. And this is why he burns here. To get a mechanical drying process of the, the beans themselves. inside of the mechanical dryer from which we saw the burners out there just before and as you can hear the coffee just goes around here and around pushed by this old old machinery I haven't seen this for ages this kind of old school machinery and you can see there how the smoke's coming out it's basically like a grinder on the inside Wow. Stunning. See here the temperature inside. This tube here says 55 degrees Celsius. That's right, pretty hot. Slow roasting process still. I'm really enjoying this. Look at these old machinery here. We only need 30 or 60 days to rest. Yes? And we are going to see that in this moment we have a lot of coffee here in the, in the storage. Yes? So 30, 30 days for a medium quality and 60 days resting for a gourmet quality, a great quality. So similar to the way 
with wine, the longer you store it, the better the quality, the more flavors it develops all the time. I guess this is the storage area in here. Another incredible, incredible piece of old school machinery here. And there you see a guy carrying the coffee physically, manually. All right. So he allowed me to try and walk off this, these beams here. This is how they get into the top. Can you imagine? It says it weighs about 45 kilos, 100 pounds to get with this massive bag here on your shoulders as you saw those guys before. I mean, that gets some respect from me, man. That is serious labor. I mean, I need to focus enough just walking <laughs> with a camera here. That is crazy. So this is the storage area. So stay in here for about 60 days for the top quality. One guy will come in, a specialist, and taste it. And then he'll taste the bean raw and he will note the flavors and he will then know if he can sell it for a high quality coffee or a medium quality coffee or instant quality, instant coffee quality. Ooh. Yeah. Here we see all the coffee stored around. This is proper manual labor. Phenomenal stuff. Wow.
So this one here is the roaster. And it comes in this tank down here. So it drops in here and goes into that tank down there. And then comes out over here and cools down there. Then it gets moved into a bag, gets that pipe into the bag, it sucks it up, and this is the grinder for the beans that they sell pre ground already. And then the packing area. in here so this guy is packing it up and getting ready for the 10% that they are selling here in uh, El Salvador itself because as I said all the rest gets sold and exported the other 90% to Starbucks and Tim Hortons big coffee shops around the world to buy it and roast it themselves in their countries the way they want it. So yeah, that is the process from drying, from harvesting, drying, washing, well washing first, then the drying, then the separation and then the grinding and roasting of the coffee at the end. Tough, tough, tough manual labor. Absolutely massive, massive loads of respect for those guys. So yeah, there you go. That's where your Starbucks coffee comes from. That's the labor that it takes for you to get a nice caramel latte in New York or wherever you're from. Like, imagine that, they get paid 10, 10 bucks an hour, uh, 10 bucks a day, and your Starbucks coffee costs four. Big respect to these guys here. Yeah. Massive respect. The pot, and the other part is to wash the filter, yes? Because in this moment, you can see that it is like a clay, yes? The clay, all the sun is like a coal, yes? And you, for that reason, you need to use water to pick it. And we are going to taste that coffee, gourmet quality. This is like a bourbon variety, gourmet quality, and wash process. Here in El Carmen, we process, we receive four different um, varieties every year. We have the Borgon, Patamara, Patas, uh, and Geisha, yes? For example, with the Borgon, the coffee is stronger, but it's smaller and it has like a balanced acidity. With the Pacamara, Pacamara is stronger than the Borgon, with balanced acidity, and it has like a dark chocolate flavor. We have Pacas, Pacas is like a medium. It's not as stronger, it's not light. And we have the Geisha. The geisha is like a thin because it's very light, and it has citrus and floral flavor. Citrus like the king of the orange and the lemon, and floral like a jasmine. But we don't have anything, there are like a natural flavor, yes? And we have three different qualities. With the qualities, we have the high ground, the strictly high ground, and gourmet. For example, the high ground is the coffee that we recollect between 1,000, no, between 800 to 1,000 meters above the sea level. Yes, and we have strictly high ground between 1,000 to 1,200 meters above the sea level. And it's very good quality at 1,200 meters above the sea level. Yes, and in this moment, we are in 1,260 meters. We have the gourmet quality. There is like this. Yes, but not all the parts of the farm are, on, are at the same elevation. For that reason, we have the three qualities. Yes, and the other part is that here we we have four different processes in the farm. We have the wash the honey, the natural, and the anaerobic. With the wash process, we need to separate the red skin and the slimy part, and at the end, the coffee is stronger with balance of acidity. With the honey, we only separate the red skin, not the slimy part. We dry the coffee with the slimy part, with the juice. And at the end, the coffee is sweetness with sweetness and caramelized flavors. And we have like the natural process, in that we, they recollect the farm, they recollect the coffee during the day, and at the end of the day, they come here, we receive the coffee, and we pour directly in the dry area. We don't separate anything, we dry with the whole skin. And at the end, we are going to get like a red fruity flavor or wine flavor. And it's the same, we have the anaerobic. For the anaerobic, they recollect the coffee during the day, and at the end of the day, we receive the coffee, and we put in plastic bags. When we put in plastic bags, we are going to leave in ferment for seven days. 
and after seven days, mm. the coffee is ready to fall in the dry area, but with the whole skin. In the end, we can get like a red fruity flavor, wine flavor, sometimes pine salt or tamarind flavor. So we don't have anything. There are natural flavor only with the fermentation. Yeah? And in this moment, you can see that I prepare in the, the bourbon, the bourbon variety, and the traditional method that we call chorreador in Spanish. Yeah? But it's like a full oven. And here the coffee is not stronger, and it's not stronger because we only get with gravity. I only add the water, and we are going to get the coffee. Yeah? Uh, and the other part is that we are using uh, the filter that is photon. Yeah? For the reason we can get different flavors, and for the flavor. Yeah? Okay.